Hey guys, I have a problem. Actually, I have two problems. I own a country swing dance club, it's called Peak Nights. It's every Friday and Saturday night and it's in Provo, Utah. If you're in the area, you should definitely come dancing, it's really fun. But Peak Nights has become really popular recently. In fact, it's become so popular that we're actually gonna be doubling the size of the building. All of this is really good, so what's the problem, you ask? Well, our current venue is really cool. It has high ceilings and beautiful lights and this really cool vintage looking peak sign on it. But our first problem is that we actually aren't allowed to have signage on the outside of the building that says Peak Nights. The second problem is that with this expansion, we're going to have a whole second room. And I would love to have a sign like that we do on the current wall that says Peak, but paying for someone to build one of those is really expensive. Like we're talking $1,000 per letter. But I think I found a solution to both problems. I'm going to build a bat signal, but with the logo for Peak Nights. This should be way better than paying thousands of dollars for a sign because one of these guys is only like 40 bucks and I could easily bring it outside at night and then bring it back inside for the day and not get in trouble with zoning. Now I have no idea if this will actually work or what the best way to do it is. So if you want to, you can come on this journey with me and learn from my mistakes so you can know how to do it best for your business, house, or whatever projects you want to do it for. I currently have four main ideas of how I want to do this. One, I could just cut out of paper the old-fashioned way. Two, I could cut out of cardboard. Three, I could cut out of foam. And fourth, I could laser cut it out of wood or plastic or something like that. Granted, I've never actually laser cut anything. Once we get the stencil figured out, we're going to need to find some way to attach them and adequately diffuse the light without melting the material. After we do that, we're going to compare all of them to see which one works best. We're also going to compare the pricing and how much it costs as far as time-wise to do it. So if that sounds interesting, let's get into it. Hey guys, so this is Kobe from the future, and man, have I learned a lot throughout this whole process. I made so many mistakes, and I'm so excited to show you how if I had known what I know now, I could have easily made this bat signal for less than 50 bucks and a couple hours of work. But present day Kobe doesn't know this yet, so let's check in with him. Okay, so we have both cut out our cardstock as well as our normal paper, but because I'm assuming that when you put these in front of such a massive light like this, it's not gonna be enough. We're also gonna cut out cardboard before we go to the whole laser cutter fanciness. So let's get to it. Obviously using a razor blade isn't gonna get you the cleanest cuts. However, there are lots of ways to get this kind of a clean cut even if you don't have a laser cutter. You could use a saw, order something from Etsy, or hit up Office Depot. But if you're a regular DIYer, you can get a really nice laser cutter for about 400 bucks, which I know isn't cheap, but it's not nearly as unattainable as I thought it would be. I thought it'd be like thousands of dollars, but $400 isn't that bad. So this is my laser cutter. Uh, it's from Xtool, uh, it's the Xtool D1. So that's cool. I have no idea how to use it. So I tested it a little bit off camera and all I was able to seemingly get it to do was cut, I don't know if you can see this, but cut just lines in it. And that was me trying to cut the Peak logo. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna, we're gonna watch a quick little YouTube video, figure out what's wrong, what I'm doing wrong, and then hopefully cut it out. So I wanted to show you this struggle busting because I feel like most videos on YouTube just show the fun and good parts, but I wanted to show you that it's not all easy and it's okay to struggle when you're doing a DIY project. Okay, so we finally got our first little test guy done. This is what it looks like. It did not cut all the way through because I didn't set it to be that powerful, but I spent like an hour trying to figure out what the frick was wrong. And essentially there was a belt, one of these belts. There's a belt on the underside of here that was not actually working. Uh, not, not, it, was, it just wasn't attached. So how to get that. So now we're gonna try uh, cutting all the way through and then we're gonna try maybe cutting some wood and see how that goes. While we watch this super satisfying laser cut of a Peak Nights logo, if you're enjoying this video thus far and want to get to see more videos about both the educational parts of running a business and personal finance stuff, or the practical parts like making a super cheap bat sign, consider clicking that subscribe button. It really means the world to me and every person who subscribes really makes my day. One thing I realized as I was making this project is I was gonna need something to center the light. So I got this thing called the Fresnel lens, which was supposed to work, but as you'll see, it might not. 
So the next thing we need to do is put a tube around this thing so we can direct the light and aim it at our Fresnel lens at the end so we can get that pretty bat sign. So I've got some cardboard and some foam here, but in order to get the length of it around, instead of measuring it and then measuring it, I just took a piece of string and wrapped it around the light so I could know about how long it was, cut it, and then I can use this piece of string to figure out how long I'm supposed to cut my foam or cardboard. Now this is when I started to get really excited. I had my spotlight already, I had the Fresnel lens to focus the light, I had the thing to make the sign of peak nights on it, everything was gonna be great. And then this happened. So you're probably wondering why the lights in the background aren't on, and that's because we're gonna be testing our little contraption and seeing how it works. So we're gonna start by just turning off this light. Boom. I guess we still have that light, but I'm pretty sure you'll be able to see it pretty well. So we're gonna plug this guy in. Boom. <clears throat> I can obviously change the colors and stuff. And the problem is, it doesn't work very well when you first put it on there. I don't know if you can see this. Hopefully you can see this. Um, <clears throat> and the reason why is because of the way light works. So we need something called a Fresnel lens, which actually centers the light. And if we put it right here, theoretically that should now I'm still not entirely sure why it didn't work. According to the internet, using a Fresnel lens should have been able to focus the light and make it work better as a spotlight, but it didn't. So I just hopped over to Amazon and bought myself a $30 spotlight, and this works way better. But because we had a different light now, we had to kind of go back to the drawing board with how we were gonna mount the light. So rather than using that multicolored light thing that wasn't working, we're gonna use this spotlight, which will work. And instead of cutting all the pieces out of individual pieces of cardboard, we're just gonna use one of these pre-bought tubes and cut it down to size and hopefully that'll work. Let's get to it. Well, beside this little kickback right here, that was actually pretty solid. Probably should have cut the last little bit of it a little bit more carefully. I don't know if that's the safest way to do it, but hey, we're trying. Next, I mounted a ring to hold the light on the inside of the tube, and using this pre-made tube was a way better idea than trying to make it myself. If you're gonna do this for yourself, I would definitely recommend just buying an eight inch concrete form from Home Depot for like 15 bucks. Then just for good measure, I put some silicone caulk around the edges to make sure the light wouldn't seep out and to give it some extra strength. And here you're essentially seeing, because I'm incapable of measuring things properly, I had to cut a secondary ring and attach my little Peak Knights logo to it so it would actually properly fit inside the tube. So even if you're stupid, just do things multiple times and it ends up working out, I guess. Now, is attaching it with duct tape probably the classiest thing to do? No. But does it work? Yes, and was I kind of tired of this project by this point and just wanted to get it done and knew I was gonna spray paint the whole thing so you probably wouldn't be able to tell that much. And this will be in the rafters so no one's gonna see it. Yes, yes I was. And then here we're also seeing me make some supports for it so that it's gonna stay level because it is a tube. So if the ground isn't perfectly flat, it would roll. So this just essentially makes it so that it won't roll when you place it down on the ground. It's amazing how much a quick coat of spray paint can do to make something look more professional and classy. And once this is up in the ceiling, no one's gonna even recognize that it's there, especially in the dark. So this just helps it blend into its surroundings and it gives it a nice protection from the elements because I used a black enamel rather than just using a black spray paint. Now, before I show you how it looks in the dark, let's see how close I could actually get to doing this for 50 bucks. The light was 40 bucks after taxes, and apparently it's now listed for 45 on Amazon, so that kind of stinks. The tube was $13, but I only used half of it, so is that seven, is that 13? You can decide. I used half a tube of caulk and half a can of spray enamel, so let's say that's five bucks for that. And the cardboard for everything else was free from leftover Amazon packages. So all in, I spent just over $60 for a really cool light up sign for my business. But now I wanna hear what you guys think. Do you think it looks good? 
What would you do differently? Do you see any other use cases for something like this? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to see more videos like this one, click that subscribe button. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you all next time.